Hi everyone, thanks for coming back for part two. Um, I just wanted to reiterate that um, all of these Bible codes are coming up. All, of, all these Bible codes that you see here, this, this entire list right here, up to here, all of these are coming up in Exodus 13, 14. These are all, all these terms are all in one matrix and, and these are just the terms that I've searched for there's potentially way more terms than what you see here in, in this matrix and then the rest of these right here come up in Chronicles this is one other matrix but if you go back to if you go to the website um, over here Bible Code Wisdom and if you just put in tidal wave and nothing else you'll see that there's 48 matches for the word tidal wave so there's potentially you know more than just two matrixes but I'm just concentrating on on these two matrixes and what I do to keep the to keep it in a matrix is I just repeat the the same words the same first few words and then just change the ending and that's sort of like creating an access you know you've heard of an access term well you don't really have an access term with this website it, it just you know goes from matrix to matrix depending on what you put in but if you want to fixate it on a particular uh, matrix then you can just um, create your own access by just putting the same few words and just checking to make sure that it's coming up in the same um, part of the scriptures. Now when you just put in tidal wave and nothing else um, what comes up is Genesis 4 12 through 15 and I just want to read this because I think this is very interesting and I'm just going to quickly read the, these scriptures. It says, When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee its strength. A fugitive and a wanderer shalt that be in the earth. And Cain said unto, Ho unto Jehovah, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, that ha thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the ground, and from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a wa wanderer in the earth and it will come to pass that whosoever findeth me will slay me and Jehovah saith unto him therefore whosoever slayeth Cain vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold and Jehovah appointed a sign for Cain lest any finding him should smite him so as you can see this scripture is speaking about a sign for Cain when when Cain was marked with a sign so this was a very first mark in scripture where where it's you know marking people I believe this is a, a prelude to the mark of the beast which I think that w whatever is in this you know Iran deal or whatever causes this to happen may very well have something to do with the mark of the beast because in the other matrix that I did which comes up in um, the book of Chronicles which I'll, I'll go over this one as well but I just want to show you that right in the middle of this table it says according to the abominations of the nations the abominations of the nations it comes up right in the middle of the table almost as if it's telling us what is going to cause this huge tidal wave and um, you know I just think that the mark of the beast would be you know the ultimate abomination of desolation of course I don't know what the abomination of desolation is going to be for certain but I just can't imagine that anything you know being 
worse than that than, than the mark of the beast and also um, I think that would be the only thing that could actually for certain reveal who the Antichrist is because if you think about it even if the common understanding of 2 Thessalonians 2 is true that the Antichrist is going to be revealed when he sits in the temple of God even if that's taken literally um, if some if there was a newly built temple and someone were to just walk into it and sit in it and claim that they are God that wouldn't necessarily convince the world that this person is the Antichrist because for one thing that's been done before that was done with Antiochus Epiphanes but that doesn't make him the Antichrist so any you know crazy person could walk into the temple and say they're God but that's not gonna convince anyone that they're the Antichrist I think the mark of the beast is the only thing that will reveal for certain who the Antichrist is that's when you know that there won't be any more doubt you know a lot of people think that the Antichrist has already been revealed and you know maybe he has but we won't know for certain until the mark of the beast I think that's the one thing that will reveal him with certainty without any shadow of a doubt who the Antichrist is so I think you know the abomination of desolation and the mark of the beast may very well have something to do with what will result in a huge tidal wave okay now I'm gonna skip back to the original matrix that I was in which is in Exodus 13 14 and this is another table that I've done in that matrix and this one reads tidal wave earth east coast three new year Sukkot okay now again I'm going to refer back to this video it was on Sukkot that um, Natan had his near-death experience it was the last blood moon of the tetrad that's the actual day that he was taken up to heaven and you know saw everything that he saw and then over here where you see three the number three I had actually done this table a couple of months ago all of these tables that I've been presenting most of them I had done a couple of months ago so I couldn't remember exactly why I put in three over here but I'm thinking it was because it was three days if you go back to the video a little 27 which was our September 11 was actually three days before oops hold on okay sorry about that it was actually three days before the new year which would be Rosh Hashanah or Tishri 1 so a little 27 which was our September 11 would have been three days before Tishri 1 and um, I couldn't find the word days but as you can see the word day is in here and if you look at the text you'll see that the word day actually comes up three three times and I'll show you that in a second but the other thing that I couldn't remember when I, when I saw that the three if it was talking about the three days of darkness but if you look here in the text and you just look for the word day because I was trying to see if it actually had the word days in the text and I didn't see the word days but I did see the word day so here's one okay so it says that God would give them a pillar of fire to give them light that they might go by day and by night so we have one day and one night right here and then you see it again here the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night so you have another day and night here and 
Okay, I was just trying to find the third one, and the third one is actually before the other two that I just showed you. It starts right here, and Jehovah went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them the way and by night. So your third, well actually this is the first day and night right here. Day, one day and one night. And then you have another day and night here. And then another day and night here. So in this table you have three days and three nights. Okay, so that definitely definitely seems to be making reference to the the three days of darkness, which I'll get to in just a minute. But first, let me just go over the terms in this table. Um, over here in the yellow, you have the word new with the letters N, E, W. And, okay, the word year is here in the green with the letters Y, E, A, R, and of course you have Sukkot right here in the reddish color, the fuchsia color, and over here in the green you have the word three with the letters T, H, R, E, E, and over here in the blue you have the word coast, You have the word east here in the bluish purple with the letters E, A, S, T. And of course you have the word title over here in the light red with the letters T, I, D, A, L. And wave over here in the pink with the letters W, A, V, E. Okay, so as I said, this does seem to be making reference to the three days of darkness, which uh, brings me to the prophecy by Ephraim Rodriguez. And there's a lot of um, videos on YouTube about his prophecy. You can see him right here. But this is just a short video that talks just about the three days of darkness. And I'm going to go ahead and put a link in the description box but I thought the view count over here was very interesting since you know we're talking about September 11 and you know the official start of the Gog Magog war you know according to Natan's vision started on September 11th and that's also a very important date for the Illuminati and the reason for that is because of Revelation 9-11. So if you're not familiar with Reve Revelation 9-11, you, you should read that. But actually, let me just go ahead and pull it up and, and we'll read that real quick. Okay, it reads, And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. And this is just after a star falls from heaven. I'll read from here. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless pit, and there rose a smoke out of the pit, a smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And I don't want to run out of time, so I'm going to end this one here, and I'll just pick up in the next video.